welcome to another episode of Blooms for You. This is where I say thank you to the names as they come up on my list that I have recorded since my channel started. Everybody that comments and everybody that subscribes that I can identify go on a list and eventually as my orchids bloom out, the names come up, then I personally get to say thank you and express my appreciation for your support on my channel, bloom after bloom after bloom. This has been a staple series on my channel and please know that if you have been with my channel from the beginning and have not been mentioned, then there is something very, very wrong at my end because I cannot see you. Some accounts are private and they are not visible to my eye when I look at who has subscribed where I can then take a record of the names. So if you are private and you've never commented before and you think, well, hey now, we're in 2022, I've been subscribed since 2020, I've never been mentioned, please leave me a comment, let me know you're here, otherwise it would appear that I'm just skipping through randomly and that is not the case. If, of course, your wish is to remain anonymous, I absolutely, totally respect that. Know then that if your name isn't mentioned today and everybody that is anonymous but supporting my channel, I like to have a cluster bloomer right at the opening to say these blooms are for you. Because even if I can't see you, even if I can't thank you personally, know that I am grateful that you are here. Your support means a lot. And normally I like to have cluster bloomers. They don't always work out that way. Sometimes a single bloom will have to suffice and then we all share it all together. But in this case, I have my Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia still in bloom, even though we have, since the last time we saw her, lost some blooms along the bloom spikes but the tops have now bloomed out and she is still looking marvelous. I've got one more bud to go. Still looking marvelous, still smelling divine. And what you see back here, ah, the camera is showing them yellow and old. They're not. Oh, maybe this is already a hint that they will be tomorrow and the camera can see something I can't. But anyway, yeah, she smells divine. It's a bit of an overcast day. It doesn't bother this orchid one bit. The honeysuckle and the burnt molasses thick fragrance permeates the air. She is a great candidate to say thank you to everybody that supports my channel, not mentioned here today. And as we move on to see whose name have come up in this episode, if you like what you see, go ahead and give this video a like, or if you're not sure about what you're seeing and this is weird to you that I'm calling out names as if I'm giving out Oscar winners, then go ahead and dislike. But if you do dislike the video, would you please leave me some feedback in the comments about what it is that you disliked? So maybe I can make some changes or maybe we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. I am open to the dialogue. This is not about, oh, somebody disliking or whatever. No, if there is something, anything, that you say, yeah, no, not to my liking, dislike, let me know in the comments because I can't improve if I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And it is my intention to improve every single time I put up a video. So your feedback either way is very, very much appreciated. But now let's go and have a look at what blooms have been matched to which names. Two blooms out of four are holding on much, much better. And well, I cannot dedicate these two blooms down there because look, they've collapsed. Still, we're gonna focus on the two blooms that I have here and talk about why the other blooms collapsed. So to say thank you to Genie C and Epiphytic Addict, I am focusing on these two gorgeous blooms of my Lelia Pacavia and they go to you as a massive thank you for your support on my channel. Thank you, you're so appreciated. Unfortunately, I had to move two other names to another orchid that is blooming. I was hoping to be able to dedicate four Bacavia blooms that are pristine to everybody's name that came up. However, upon closer inspection, when I was repotting this orchid, it turns out there are actually two orchids in here and I was always thinking that I have one Pacavia with two leads. 
Meaning, what you're seeing in bloom now is the one piece that bloomed last year for the first time and is blooming now again for the second time since it's been in my collection. The growth down here <laughs> that has the blooms that collapsed very quickly is a piece that is a first time bloomer. So even though they looked beautiful for a couple of days, I was waiting for this sheath to also be in bloom and I managed to get some footage while the orchid was in full bloom with four blooms blooms looked amazing and then of course the piece that is a first time bloomer could not withstand the strong winds that were a main feature for quite some weeks and they promptly collapsed. I'm hoping that next year that piece is going to be strong enough with its second blooming and that we can hold on to Pacavia blooms for their full duration which is easily three weeks. Now she's a stunning, stunning bloom, beautiful lip, also has somewhat of a chrysaline effect on her petals and sepals. I would say that they are more satiny and the chrysaline is not as obvious, but her fragrance is nothing really to write home about. The beauty of her blooms be lies that she should have a fabulous fragrance. They kind of contradict each other because you would think because your eye is seeing something so gorgeous that the fragrance would match, but it is a very, very weak, common Cattleya fragrance. There's nothing impacting about it, which last year completely surprised me. I thought I was going to get myself something mm -hmm, delicious and divine not the case. So the purchase of this orchid is pretty much just for the beautiful blooms, not because they are supported by an amazing fragrance. Do not mistake that as if I'm dissing my Lelia Pacavia. I'm so happy that she is healthy, that she survived the repot and everything is going great. Now all we need to do is make sure that she holds on to all the blooms from all the pieces that are now mature blooming size pieces. <laughs> I know, it's confusing. I was surprised. I thought I had an orchid with two leads, but hey ho. Genie C, Epiphytic Addict, the gorgeous Lelia Pacavia blooms that you see on the screen, they bloom for you. Thank you so very much for your support on my channel. Before I get carried away with this dedication and the update on Dendrobium bensoniae, let me say thank you to Avea C Toy TV, Hansel Urisar, Chiti Chiti Atalu, Ahem Thoughts Motivational Quotes, and Rick Waters. Dendrobium Bonsonie, best blooming that I've had since she has been in my collection. She blooms for you to say thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. Oh, the update on this one is so much fun. Look at these blooms. This dendrobium was sent to me as a replacement of a dendrobium unicum that I still have, but that dendrobium unicum, in my opinion, didn't stand a chance of survival, so I was a bit concerned I was going to lose it. Turns out I still have it. Anyway, Bensonia came into my collection, well, as a unicum replacement, and clearly I thought either I had a different variety of unicum in this one when it arrived, because it has nothing to do when you compare the structures with the real unicum. Anyway, long story short, she did bloom for me last year and Lo Ho identified this orchid for me and I have to say, if I had seen these blooms in images while I was shopping orchids, I would not have bought her. Then you know how many times we can also be a little bit disgruntled about mistakes that nurseries make? Well, this was a positive mistake. I don't want to be without this orchid. She is amazing. The blooms... <laughs> being white. Why would I not jump on that bandwagon if I was shopping for orchids? Don't know, can't answer that question. But the smell of vanilla sugar. And as I'm standing about three, four feet away from her, I can smell that fragrance. It is delicious. It's like the vanilla sugar you use for baking your cookies. It is so exquisite. It is light, but strong, if that makes sense. It's a very light perfume, but it is in the air. So no sun has to shine on this orchid for her to exude her fragrance. I suppose that the more sun that she would get exposed to would intensify that fragrance. However, she lives in my blooming alley in bright shade, and depending on the angle of the sun, she either gets direct sun or during the hot months of the year, she is in bright shade. But what an orchid. Last year for identification purposes, thankfully we got three blooms and it all was fantastic. This year, <laughs> 
I mean, if this is just an example of what we can expect next year, then <laughs> this is just going from good, great, amazing. I don't know how else to structure how impressed I am because this orchid is in beast mode. I got two growths last year, one of which you see is the longer canes and one of which is the shorter canes in the back that only has two blooms. But now she's producing four new growths and I can't tell you how fast those growths are growing while she's holding on to the blooms and they have been open for two weeks and the new growth started pretty much at the same time. This orchid is beast mode. Growths, root growths, blooming and fragrance. She can handle all of that in one go. Ooh, the potential for the coming years. I will be so happy and I don't want anything to go wrong with this orchid. We talk about winter resters and deciduous orchids and we don't see much. It is so nice to see so much happening on one orchid and it's not even slow going. Incredible. The sugary vanilla fragrance as well is a knockout and she sparkles in the sun as well. Incredible. Everything about the character of this orchid speaks to me <laughs> and the fact she can live outside in my climate. Well, bring it on. She is on an inorganic mount with a scrubby pad as her humidity buffer and I didn't take off the cork that she came with because I didn't want to destroy that many roots. So it's kind of a hybrid, needs must kind of a mount, but based on the size of the orchid and her vigor, it is pretty small. She's coping fabulously. With the wind that we've been having, I have been watering her three, four, if not five times a day doesn't seem to phase her, the more the better. I can see what's going on. <laughs> very, very excited to be able to dedicate Dendrobium bensoniae this year to Aveya C. Toy TV, Hansel Urizar, Chitty Chitty Atalu, Ahem Thoughts, Motivational Quotes, and Rick Waters. Sugar Vanilla Fragrance, White Chrysaline Blooms, Vigorous, Vigorous, Happy, Happy Dendrobium. Well, these blooms are for you, so thank you to all of you also for your support on my channel. You're so appreciated. Dendrobium Victoria Regina in bloom in southern Spain started to bloom out around about the middle of June and is still in bloom while we are in July. Now for this cool growing orchid I find that pretty impressive. So before I do a little update on her I want to say thank you to Del Rose Lawrence, Anna Karin Heldner, Olga Lopez and Kathy Arbor. Thank you to all of you for your support of my channel and well here are my Dendrobium Victoria Regina blooms. They bloom for you. This orchid was a big challenge for me. I thought there was no way it was going to be happy in my climate, which for seven, eight months of the year is pretty warm. Probably, I thought, not much to her liking. However, you can see she's doing amazingly well. Now, I did buy two back in the day because they were on sale from the nursery and it turns out that I actually have three different Victoria Reginas on here because all the blooms are not the same. My favorite though is the one with the richest and deepest of blues, purple. In the viewfinder you will see it looking a little bit more on the pink side but there's a warmer indigo to these blooms in real life that the camera just can't seem to pick up. Then I have a variety that is a little bit more washed out in that indigo and it has more pronounced little white dots at the ends of the petals and sepals which I find extremely charming. And then I have another one that is even more washed out let's say paler in that indigo, also more pronounced white at the end of the petals and sepals. If I had gotten any one of the three, I would have been delighted. Having the three different bloom variations though, um, I really prefer that darker, richer indigo and I would also prefer to have had all my blooms look like that. That is not the case, so I'm just being very picky. More importantly, the orchid is doing fabulously. 
She's on a cork mount and back in 2020 I harvested a keiki that I also pinned to the top of the mount and the keiki has grown a growth and is also in bloom for the first time. Unfortunately it turns out not to be the dark rich indigo kind of bloom. Still, you can see that I have a lot of new growths that are now just maturing, ready for next year's blooming, plus a new growth at the base of one of those. It would appear that next year, if all goes well, we're going to be seeing a lot more of the darker indigo colored blooms, and I'm really looking forward to that. This orchid is not fragrant, but she is just rocking it here in southern Spain, contrary to anything one might read in any kind of care guide on the interwebs. So if you're umming and eyeing about not being able to grow a Victoria Regina because your climate is so warm, let me say that is not the case. You can very well grow this orchid in a warm climate if your winter sort of drops in temperature so that she can get her bearings because that's when she really gets her grow on, slows down a little bit during the warmer months of the year, but definitely does not struggle. So Del Rose Lawrence, Anna Karin Heldner, Olga Lopez, Kathy Arbor. I hope that you like dendrobiums, I hope you like dendrobium Victoria Regina, and I hope that you like some indigo colors in your blooms, even if they're not fragrant, because these blooms are for you. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. Cartwheels around the patio. What a difference a plant makes. <laughs> this is Lelia Gracilis 2.0. Yep, 2.0 because I lost my first one. This is the first time I see Lelia Gracilis in bloom here on my patio and I find it fitting that this one single itty bitty bloom by contrast, here's my pinky finger, this little itty bitty bloom is big enough and bursting with gratitude <laughs> to dedicate to three people. One being the Orchid Room, the other one being Melissa Walker, and the third being Michael McCarthy, because this orchid was gifted to me back in 2020. I was sent a care package of orchids from my favorite nursery, and back in the day I actually had my original Lelia Gracilis, and you know, it, it didn't look to be a lost cause entirely, but someone out of those three, or it was a group effort, recognized that it is possible I'm gonna lose my Lelia Gracilis, and they sent me this one as a replacement, should that ever happen. And it turned out it happened. I lost my first Gracilis. This one came in such amazing condition. That's what I'm saying. What a difference a plant makes. If you get a sickly one, you're fighting to get it to recover and not always does that work. You get a healthy one and this is the result. A year and a half later, I got a Lelia Gracilis bloom. And once again, even though she's tiny, she is bursting with enough attitude to go around and say thank you to the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy for that gorgeous care box. I so appreciate it. Every time I look at those orchids, think of you guys. I remember why and you know it all just <laughs> is wrapped up in a little bit of a ball of emotion of gratitude and other things let's just say. But oh when I saw her come with one little spike she has other growths that she has been growing, but I don't see a spike. There's a teeny tiny one in there, but I don't see a spike in there. <laughs> it's just, I have no idea how long this bloom is going to last. She is now open a full day, and the spike started maybe six weeks ago, around about that time. Clearly, she's not fragrant, and I wanted her in the sun for a moment there. She looked beautiful in the sun. And then when I went to hit record for a split second, all of a sudden her colors washed out. But the images that I got before I hit the record button, beautiful. She obviously is not in your face, but she is in my face. <laughs> As in, I love her. This is what makes me love Rapiculus Lelia so much. The cute little chubby growth habit, even while they're not in bloom, they are so determined. And then when they do bloom, it might not be a wow factor bloom from a lot of people's perspective, but for me, 
<laughs> oh, my face hurts. I'm smiling so much. This Lelia Gracilis is in a semi-hydro setup with a mixture of ceramics and then a top dressing of lava rock. Live in La Vida in southern Spain and I, oh, again, the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker, Michael McCarthy. The Lelia Gracilis that you got me back in the day. First time bloomer, she blooms for you. I'm over the moon grateful, so appreciative of your gesture. Every day I fuss with the orchids that I have from that box. It's just amazing. Thank you so very much for your support on my channel. And thank you so very much for making it happen that I get to see a Lelia Gracilis bloom and dedicate it to you. You're so appreciated. Thank you. Fully understand if you say, not much to see here. Oh, but the potential. First of all, my Dendrobium Pocket Lover was gifted to me by Dana Mosanu, whose YouTube channel is Kateva Orhide. And I have to definitely dedicate this bloom to her because it's the first time that I can see Dendrobium Pocket Lover in person. What a gorgeous mother plant this orchid came from. And I was overwhelmed by the offer to get three pieces from the mother plant when Dana contacted me. I was even more overwhelmed when one day I saw buds coming out and the next day blooms. You see, all I've been doing with my pocket lover up till now since we put her into lava rock and self-watering was just mist the base of the orchid so that the new roots that are growing won't turn into a crisp with all the wind that I've been having. I never looked at the canes. I never even anticipated anything. Wasn't even hopeful. Maybe I'll see some blooms, but I have two. They have been open for about a week now. And well, Dana, thank you very, very much for this gorgeous little orchid. As a thank you, the first two blooms that I see, they go to you also for your support on my channel for reaching out to me and asking if I want a piece of your mother plant, sending me three. Everything is just snowballed overwhelming, <laughs> if that is even an expression. Let's just say I'm just grateful and want to thank you via these two blooms for this beautiful, beautiful gift. The blooms are pristine white and eventually I'm trying to figure out if the fragrance is slightly citrusy or more on the floral side. I'm trying to even see if my brain isn't trying to trick me that I have a fragrance seeing as this orchid definitely is not rooted in. It's probably not even strong enough to exude a fragrance but Dana has been talking about a um, beautiful fragrance so <laughs> I'm like are you aren't you? Anyway, the next blooming will tell all and I'm looking forward to that. But right now, being able to see these blooms, looking into that chartreuse green throat, it is a little bit more on the pale green side than it is yellow as you see on the screen. Gorgeous, gorgeous, and I have to say one more time, gorgeous. Even the proportion of the blooms are much, much larger than the whole orchid itself just insane. You see the bloom right here. This one was the first one to open. And I wonder if it's failing because of the strong wind that I've been having. But here we have one at least pristine and I did want to document it. I wanted to film it. I wanted to say thank you verbally to you, Dana, Kateva Ohide, for this gorgeous little dendrobium and for thinking of me and the support on my channel. I love her. First time bloomer on Ninja Orchids. <laughs> this is Lelia Giuliani. Can you believe it? Look at that cute little pink thing sticking out of those chubby little pseudobulbs going, ta-da, I'm here. <laughs> Just adore this little bloom. I had the Alvarenguenses in bloom earlier in the season and they were a little bit more on the pink pale size, baby pink, which was just adorable. And here comes this one making a little statement with a short little spike typical for Rapiculus lalias that bloom during the summer months and then poof, a bloom. <laughs> I had two buds 
Unfortunately, one failed, but hey, first time bloomer, there are no complaints on my part. Having achieved to get one bud to bloom out, but having seen two buds, there is potential for next year, and I hope nothing goes wrong so that we can all appreciate how cute these daisy little kind of blooms look, and if there were two or three more of them, I mean, you know, what can you say? <laughs> Charming, maybe? Uh, charming is a good word. But, oh my goodness, <laughs> I've been going on and on. Hans Wurst, your name, I love it. Hans Wurst. <laughs> I don't know if you're German, but that expression is fantastic. Using it as your name is brilliant and inspired. And I am dedicating my first time blooming Lelia Giuliani to you to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. Know that size isn't everything, but in this case, <laughs> when it comes to Rapiculus Lelia's size is everything. This is what got me into these orchids because I just love the fact that they're so small. Well, let's just say 90% of them are small, but this is the size that is everything to me. And I just love growing these little lalias. And then when they bloom and I get to dedicate a bloom, two blooms, maybe three one day, that makes it even more special. So Hans Wurst, size is everything, a very special orchid dedicated to you to say thank you so very much for your support on my channel. She is in a mix of lava rock. It's a semi-hydro setup, even though I have like a decorative sleeve around the base. It is semi-hydro and there is a bit of ceramics just to maintain the wicking and the moisture for the times when she is very thirsty and is in growing phase and would normally live submerged in water until the water recedes and then she's exposed to the harshest of conditions. But yeah, I would say she's a slosh. <laughs> she's a drinker. <laughs> and then I have to back off on the drink just to wean her off gently and slowly. Then we start the process again. So she has her drinking seasons. She has a new growth right here. And I am wondering, are you going to actually bloom? Because this is another lead going, of course, <laughs> please in the wrong direction or for her, it's the right direction. But this is the growth back here that is in bloom. So I'm wondering they're both pretty much the same size. Should I be so lucky to have a second flush? What do I see in here? That's not happening. It could be ash from the fires, but it could also be a mealybug. So paintbrush on the ready and handy. No way are there any pests gonna get into my precious Rapiculus Lelias. Starting with root growth. So this is the time then also, you know, submerge and dry, submerge and dry. For my warm climate and the very dry atmosphere that I have here, this is working a treat. So, Hans Forst, once again, size is everything. And Lelia Giuliani, she blooms for you. Thank you, and if you're German, vielen, vielen Dank für die Unterstützung hier auf meinem Kanal. Thank you for your support on my channel. And now we have a little bit of sunshine coming through the cloud cover, but I'm going to add some images just so you see more of the detail of these blooms. As the sun gets a little bit stronger, so does her fragrance. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I enjoy seeing buds forming, sheaths forming, wondering if there's anything going to be in there, checking which name is going to come up, which can I allocate to which name. You know, it's all good fun. I don't feel as though I'm just making orchids bloom for my own enjoyment and I hope that this was enjoyable to you. Know that you're all so appreciated. If I haven't said that already or enough of that, just know that every time I say it, I mean it. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I wish you all a beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>